Brilliant. Okay, so you're all very welcome to the Positive Life page. Um, I'm here today with Paul Vogel, a good friend of mine, and uh, I'm going to have a chat with him about his work. Uh, I know his work very well, and uh, I've had some great experiences working with Paul over the years. Paul is describing himself as a spiritual intuitive, and he's working in this field for about 25 years. And as well, he's traveled around the world and done readings in America, Jamaica, if I remember correctly, Denmark. Um, did I miss that one? Yeah. Uh, Switzerland. Switzerland, okay. Canada. So you've done a lot of work around the world as well as in Ireland. And um, the first thing I want to ask you, Paul, is you're doing this 25 years. Yeah. How did it all start? Um, I just, um, I started using the flower essences and I got into healing. I did Reiki initiation and in 92, and then everything just opened up for me. I'd be completely, in my first session, I perceived spirit guides and I think it was just waiting for something to open, you know, and it started then. That was the beginning of it. That was the beginning of it for you. And what led you to kind of travel around the world? How did that all come about? How did it come about in the USA? And it was through invitations, really. I got invitations to go and visit people. Can you, somebody came from Jamaica, her daughter lives here and she invited me to go to Jamaica and would you do that in Jamaica? And I said, yeah, and I went. And from there on, I got other invitations to go other places, you know? So it had a, it was a very interesting time, a very interesting, and, you know, I learned a lot and I learned to read different kinds of people in different parts of the world, but we're really all the same in a way. People, yeah, it's all the same. And I'm just wondering lately, do you see kind of themes emerging in your work? Like when you, first of all, just describe for people who, who don't know you, haven't been to see you, how it works, a typical reading when they come to you? Well, I, I just sit on opposite somebody and I read their energy and I connect to their spirit and their spirit guides. And possibly I've worked as a medium as well, so I can connect to maybe relatives. So a really good reading is when I can connect to your spirit, which I do, and guides and say a relative comes in as well. I'm very happy when I get all those things in a reading, but it depends really. And readings can change over the years even for people and the way it works, but it's basically reading it, the aura and uh, connecting to spirit. Mm. And you have a lot of people who go to you quite regularly, don't they? They kind of, like there's a kind of a counseling kind of edge to your work as well. Yeah, know, yeah. So. On, on a human level, I, on the human level, I'm a counselor, but you know, it depends on what people need. And yes, there are, I have some people who come to me regularly, who need, maybe they're going through a transition over a period of time and they need to be just reminded where they're at and they're on their path. Because what I do is, you know, I can understand what's going on inside of people. I can see the inner self and it's trying to, your the person is trying to understand themselves on their path in life. And I have a way of helping them to understand that and I can see it. Um. But the integration of the human and the divine is a big part of your work, trying to let people understand their human self and how it kind of engages with their soul purpose, if you like. Yeah. So I mean, talk a I, bit about that. Yeah, I work with people who are quite sensitive, you know, anybody who comes to me is quite a sensitive person, I would say. And they've probably had quite a lot of challenges in their lives because I work with past lives as well. And I can see and I can see patterns how they're affecting your present life from another life, a pattern that's, you know, passed on, if you like. So the spirit, you know, we don't fully integrate spiritually when we are born. It takes time and you become in, you become more aware of who you are and why you're here. And I help people understand and integrate their spirit with them in their human existence, you know? So that's, you know, it's a very interesting thing to see, you know, it's very interesting to, to observe because you can see it happening. And I've helped people over the years and you can see their spirit really integrating with them over time. But they have to go through certain, you know, experiences to understand who they are. It's about awareness. The awareness Another big the theme in your work that I've noticed as well is, um, and that came up for me recently, was the whole area of past lives. Yeah. Well, so that, I, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting because you can actually see the past life and the person in the past life is sitting in front of me. And 
what they've experienced, say they died at a certain way, they've an unfinished relationship with somebody and they want to, they meet somebody in the present and they have to, uh, you know, meet them to understand why they didn't make it through in the relationship or, um, or they have certain sort of um, feelings of not filling themselves in a, in a lifetime and now they're going to do it in this lifetime. So those memories and um, they're like, um, they're just, it's like a continuation of this path of the soul through many lives. And that's what I'm aware of. And I'm help, help people to, you know, to accept that because it's hard to accept that in a way because you think this is it when you're here, you know, you think this is it, I'm, I'm in this life and I have to work, I, everything has to work out perfectly. And it's, there's a bigger story always. Yeah, and there can be stuff from a past life that can kind of hold people back. And by giving them an understanding of what yeah. happened in that life, it can allow them to move forward more easily in this life. Yeah, and it's about, and it can be about many lives as well. It's a bit, it's a, because your purpose is true many lives, your spiritual purpose kind of is linked into many lives. And some of the patterns we have from those previous lives, they're all linked and they need to be healed all together in a way. And this life for many people, it's about healing all that pattern from other lives as well. So you can sort of you can see how the healing in the present can go back to a previous life and heal it there as well like it's an unending story really when you go into it it's so a it's so fascinating you really you've helped a lot of people in your work and uh i want to pay tribute to you for that and people have come to you kind of stuck and uncertain about where to go next and also kind of there's a lot of there's a big healing aspect to what you do yeah. Um, when you work with people. Can you talk about that, the healing aspect of your work? Yeah, well, I used to be a hands-on healer in the beginning. I used to do a lot of hands-on. So I want to bring that healing energy into the session with people. And sometimes it's very, you can feel it happening. You can see it in front of you as well. But, um, so it's about clearing blocks, if you like. We all have blocks and you can see the chakras and, the, and certain chakras are blocked or they're not linked to each other. And it's about helping that shift. And even by the sitting in the reading, you can see a change right in front of you. The spirit guides come in and they help as well during the session to um, help people. And it goes on after the session as well. Like and people record sessions and they listen to them and they can link into what's happened in the session. And it keeps going on. And some people say, I've listened to it for months and now I need another one. So I've gone through everything you've said. So. It's about guides, uh, can you talk to people about what, what a guide actually is? Is a guide somebody in the non-physical who's worked with people over lifetimes? Uh, mm. Can it be another aspect of them? Yeah, it's, there's, what is a guide? there's so many. I, when I first started perceiving guides, I used to really enjoy them and, because the person in front of me would be in a lot of suffering and I wanted to help them. But the guides came in so clearly and I understood then after a time that these guides are part of the person, you know, there's just like a soul group or a team and we're helping them by evolving here and they're helping us from the other side. So there's a whole, you know, it's, it's a team, it's a team experience, you know, being a human and a spirit, but they're, they like, you've chosen to be in the physical and they, they said, well, it's your turn to be in the physical form and you're here. And by living in the physical form, you're really helping more than who you realize. You're helping your spirit as well and your spirit guides too. So they're very willing and they're very kind and they're always in the wings giving it. And you're always being guided no matter what I feel. I see you're always being guided, even though you mightn't feel it or know it, but there's always guidance there and help. You're a big part of your work and obviously what people are concerned about and come to you about is relationships. They want yeah. to meet the right person. They want to meet the soulmate. Yeah. They yeah. want to meet the twin flame. Yeah. Um, like talk a bit about relationships, how they're kind of, what I've seen in your work is that they're kind of like, sometimes you meet people for lessons, sometimes you meet people for a short period of time for yeah. a healing. Like they can mean many different things, relationships. Yeah, well, some of them, as I say, if you relate them to past lives, they're unfinished relationships and they need to be resolved in this life. Um, and, you know, and sometimes um, you're meant to be with someone to resolve things. And it's also about helping you grow. I call those twin flame people. They, you, you know, you're very attracted to them, but they have a huge effect on you and you're very emotionally upset in lots of ways. And 
there's a lot of drama. So they're like refining your personality, your spirit, so you can be with the person that you're meant to be with. So sometimes twin flames turn into soulmates, but not very often. So it's about learning how to be yourself and love yourself is very important. Not to be looking for someone to love you, but you need to love and accept yourself before you can meet the right person. That's going to be, it's like a beautiful, comfortable feeling when you meet someone right. It's just, there's no issues. There's very little to really work out. It's just, you just sit with them and you know, and that's your soulmate feeling, you know, yeah, energy. So I can help people to understand their own difficulty and what they're looking for and, uh, and why they're feeling a certain way. And I can perceive partners for people. I've done that many times. I can see a partner. Now, some of them are come for a certain amount of time and I don't know that necessarily, but some of them I can see and they're, they're someone you're meant to be with forever. So I get a very clear picture about this for future partners as well, yeah. Um. Explain to people when they come to you how it works. Um, I know at the moment you're probably doing a lot of readings on Zoom and stuff, but yeah. how long does it take to have a reading? And there's a lovely piece that you do at the end of a reading, and that's the little teacup thing, which is kind of yeah. quite charming. And I know it's a tradition in your yeah. family. Talk a bit about how a reading works. And, yeah. and the well, usually I do a little attunement and I give people like flower essences. I pick them before they come so I can tune into them. And I make them tea, and uh, which is my mother, grandmother, red tea leaves. So I like to carry that on, but I don't need to do it. But it's a, just a different kind of reading to the, the reading, the main reading. And I like to honor that. So, um, and I like people to be very quiet and the quieter you are. And, you know, so it's just me talking and I go into spirit, if you like, and I give the information. And then at the end, I read the teacup leaves and then I have a chat. So, you know, it's a lot. It can be a lot. So it could be up to an hour and a half, really. About an hour and a half, yeah. And when you say there that you like people to be quiet, I like that. Um, because I, you I know, see it though as a kind of like a lot of information comes from silence. That's yeah. what I feel. Yeah, yeah, it's like, in other words, you can't talk during the session. You've got to, because I go into my mind then, you know, it's, it's funny how it works for me, but... Um, so some people are really, and they record it and they say afterwards, oh, I'm so sorry, I, I talked in the reading. You know, it's like you really, it's like, it's like spirit talking to you directly and you need to really take it in in every way you can, just be quiet with it. Yeah. And um, when you're working with people's guides, uh, I think people find that very interesting. We talked a little bit about that, but you can have anything from like a Native American guide. You can have, yeah. it really, really varies, right? The type of guide. It can be a lot of Buddhists as well, a lot of Buddhist guides, you know, and um, it can be somebody who's like an alchemist or, you know, there's so many, it, like, it's the way spirit wants to appear, you know, to the person. And they usually feel a connection to whatever tradition they come through. Like, it could be a priest, it could be a monk, you know, it, whatever tradition, you know, and it, it, it's what will help the people feel comfortable and they will feel connected to it. And the guide will choose that form. So it's, it's easy for them, or easier for them to feel the truth of what is being said as well. In, in the, like at the moment, people are saying, and they've been saying for years in New Age Service that we are going through a big consciousness shift. Yeah. Do you feel, when the people you meet now, that you feel there is something significant going on at this time? Yeah, I've been saying it for years. I could see this, I used to call it a tsunami of energy is coming to, changes and there's nothing we can do about it and I relate it to the pandemic in a way I don't know I've been saying that for years but and you know it, and I've seen so many people progress sitting in front of me over the number of years how they've changed how they've realized who they are and how they've let go of patterns and you know and they've opened up to their spirit so I do see it as a you know I see it in a personal way if you like in front of me but I do think it's a a general, um, it's something that's really happening in the world and it needs to happen. So it has to happen in a personal way as well. But sometimes life forces you to change. You know, if you're not willing to change, your spirit will put things in your path so that you will have to change. And that's what I see as a very strong thing. We have no choice in a way but to change now. Yeah, yeah. Um, another big area for people is obviously their purpose their yeah. sole purpose. 
um, and that you help people a lot with that finding the right career. Um, yeah, talk about that other key role. Yeah, for people. Um, well, we all have like how what we do and how we live is in you know the an ordinary human way, and then there's a spiritual purpose behind everything we do. And you know, some people are secretly, in a way, doing things in a very spiritual helpful way or they have great consciousness but they don't show it but they work for humanity but some people do it in a very clear way so I identify or help people identify and often they're doing this work but they don't really understand what they're doing and I'm able to identify what they're doing and why they're doing it and it is their spiritual purpose it is like some people work with the energy of peace or healing or you know and they have that in their personality but it's very strong in their spirit and it, it's allowing that to come through more mm. and I can identify that. Yeah. You've had a real wealth of experience, you know, and I remember some interviews we've done, we used to do events together in positive nights. And uh, before I ask this question, I just want to say to people on Facebook, if anybody wants to ask a question, just post it in the comments below and I'll have a quick look before we finish up here. If you want to ask a question to Paul or we yeah. can go through, we won't be able to cover them all obviously, but we can answer a few if you wish. But Paul, like I love this part of your life where you went to this place, the, the, I think it's called the Arthur Findlay College yeah. in England. Yeah, well, I, that's, you know, that's about, you know, learning to be a medium or bringing out that gift in you. And I went there in 2000 and, uh, you know, it, it was a very, you know, I didn't know anything about it, but I didn't know anything about that part of mediumship and what it meant. But I went there just to see if I had a gift, you know, I wanted to know what my gift was and could, how could I use it, you know, because this was a very solitary path for me. There was nobody, except my guys, I suppose you could say, there was no much guidance for me with all of this. I had to kind of go on a, a discovery and a, an adventure every time to do, and, and my life is like that in a way, but, so I like to own who I am in this area, and I went and I had a very interesting time there, and they, they gave me very good, they gave me the thumbs up, you know, <laughs> about what I could do and how I, but it took me a, some time to integrate that though. Yeah. So did you meet, did you meet some extraordinary people while you were there? Yeah. I mean, it was, that was in 2000. That's quite a while ago now. And um, yeah, it was uh, very eye opening. And, um, you know, I, I felt a bit naive going there in a way. I didn't really understand it. So um, yeah, there were very, very interesting people and um yeah, I had an interesting spirits as well. Interesting places full of spirit, you know. So that but you're was, right back then in the, in, in the year 2000, we didn't have a lot of people in Ireland that we could bounce this kind of information off. No, no. It was the Mind Body Spirit Festival in Dublin. And then there was uh, Paddy McMahon. You remember Paddy McMahon? He was a kind of, a, he wrote some amazing books and yeah, you know, about his work. Yeah, Maura Lumberg was the person that I went to and she helped me to understand who I was or what I had, the gift I had. And how to use it and you know so I found her as a mentor so I like to feel that I'm you know following along in her tradition in a way and Paddy's tradition in that sense as well. Yeah they did some great work here in Ireland so I'll just go over to Facebook and see if uh, we have any questions. Paul in the meantime just if people do want to contact you and come for a reading uh, how do they go about it? What's the best way? I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram so they can find me on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. Okay. And contact me and set up a session or, yeah. And I can do it online or, or in person if it's appropriate. Okay. So someone here is asking, um, just to name the college again for them, Paul? Arthur Findlay College. It's called Stansted, in Stansted. Arthur Findlay College in Stansted, okay. Um, in the UK, obviously, yeah. Yeah, Marie is saying she'd love to go and uh, go to a session with you. Um, yeah, so Laura is asking, uh, how long do you feel this will last, the current situation we're in with the virus? Um, people are saying it might last to 2025. Do you get a sense of the timing on it? No, I don't really. I know things will be better next year. I have a, feeling, a better feeling about next year, though. But I, so I 2021 would be better okay yeah okay. i think so yeah yeah uh, kieran is all the, lots of people are asking that question do you see anything yeah. significant happening at the end of the year um i just know that this the yeah i feel 2021 things will clear it'll be definitely clearer in 2021 that's okay. my feeling 
Um, okay, and we'll post your contact details, Paul, as well in the uh, in the comments below. Sorry, what did you say again for contact? Just reiterate that again for people. Facebook, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Do you want to give an email address or anything like that? Or it, it, Paul Bugle at Gmail and lifepathreading at Gmail. I have two uh, contact. Okay, Paul Bugle at gmail.com and lifepathreading at gmail.com. Before yeah. we pin finish, Paul, is there anything you want to say or finish on? Um, I think it's important that we be aware of who we are and connect to our spirit. And I think that's what I really in, enjoy doing in my work and helping people to understand how to connect to their spirit and how to understand their lives. So it's all about awareness and it's about self-love and awareness. And it's a simple thing, really, to and to be aware that we're on a spiritual path in life. There's more. There's always more going on than we realize. And just to connect to that feeling. And that will make us feel secure in who we are in our lives. You know, it gives that feeling of being guided. Sense of security, sense of groundedness in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, Paul, all, yeah. Yeah, we're all part. And like, if you do your part in, you know, in, in your own growth, in your own way, it'll help humanity as well. You know, it'll, it's all about group consciousness as too. you know, that we, that we grow in our awareness. It helps everybody as well. They say one of the highest forms of uh, is service. Yeah, one of the highest forms that you can give is any any aspect of giving. And I feel that in my own work, when you do a bit of service, it just feels great, you know. And collaboration is the new way forward. I just want to say thanks to Paul Bogle for joining us here on the Positive Life page today. I've been to Paul uh, over the years for readings, and it's helped me in my own life amazingly. And um, so I want to pay tribute to him and thank him for that. So I really encourage people, if you feel like you need something or you're a little bit stuck, um, it can really help you out in your life. So, Paul Bogle, thanks so much for joining us, okay? Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, Paul. Cheers, Cheers. Paul. Bye.